Hi, this is Miss Frabel. This is Lesson 4, Part B. So in the previous lesson, you had four problems to work that were fraction problems, so let's see how you did. There are the answers to those, so take a minute and go ahead and check your work on those. Hopefully you did well on the fraction stuff. You're going to need that in this lesson. Alright, so here are the notes for lesson 4, part B. I'm going to give you a minute to copy them, so go ahead and hit pause and copy them and then come back. Okay, so basically you're doing two things. You're Number one, adding integers with the same sign. So this, this is now the rules for what we were doing on the number line. So when they have the same sign, you just add the numbers and you keep whatever the sign is. And the second thing is adding integers when they have different signs. So one of them is positive and one of them is negative. This time you subtract. You take the bigger number, ignore the sign, so the absolute value, you take the bigger number minus the smaller number, ignore its sign, get an answer, and then your answer will have the sign of whichever number was bigger without the sign, the absolute value. Don't worry if this doesn't make sense once we work some of these, hopefully it will. Okay, so when they say adding rational numbers, they're just talking about fractions. So you do everything the same with regular numbers and fraction numbers. You get the answers the same way, only you need to know how to work fractions in order to do this. All right, so let's go ahead and start this example. So now we're in the module. This is on page 35. All right, so we're going to go ahead and work that problem on the number line. So it's three positive, so I'm going to start at zero. Take my first vector, going to the right, magnitude of three. And then I'm adding five, so I'm adding positive, so I need to count to the right again. So one, two, three, four, five. So I need my arrow to go right here, and my answer is eight. All right, so how long is the arrow that represents three? It's three long. What direction does it point to the right? Because it's positive. How long is the arrow that represents five? It's five long. What direction it also goes right? Because it's positive. What's the sum? They add up to eight. If you were to represent the sum using an arrow, how long would the arrow be? It would be, if you're doing just the sum, it would be eight long. In what direction? It's positive, so it's going to the right. What is the relationship between the arrow representing the number on the number line and the absolute value of the number? It, it's the length is the absolute value or magnitude. All right, so here's, I always call these thinking questions. You have to think about it. Do you think that adding two positive numbers will always give you a greater positive number? Why? Okay, so right away you're probably thinking, well, I can add zero to something, but remember, zero is neither positive nor negative, so it doesn't count. So yes, it will always be positive because they're going right. Both of them are going to go right, so it has to end up being positive. Okay. 
So you already wrote that rule, so don't copy it again. You add rational numbers as the same as integers with the same sign by adding the absolute values and using the common sign. So like positive 3 plus positive 5, they're not fractions, but you added them and you kept the positive sign, so it's positive 8. All right, so what they want you to do on this particular example or exercise, this is exercise two, is they just want you to say, is it positive or is it negative? So go ahead and turn off your video for a second and work the problems deciding if it's going to be positive or negative. And then come back and I'll work them with you. Alright, you can think in terms of the number line if you haven't quite got the rule yet. So negative 4, you're going to go left 4 and then left 2. So they're both going left. So your answer is going to be negative. plus 9, you don't even really need to think about it. You know they're both going to go to the right, so it's going to be positive. Negative 6 plus negative 3, they're both going to the left, so it's going to be negative. Same thing on this, they're both going left. Alright, on this one, they're all going to the right, so it's going to be positive. And on the last one, they're both going to the left, so it's going to be negative. So I hope you did well on this. All right, now go to the second part. Take, go ahead and hit pause on your video. Take a second and work those problems out. And then come back and we'll work them together. So the first one, 15 is going to go right, 7 is going to go right, they're both positive, and you know that one without thinking. You just add 15 plus 7, and you're going to get 22. The second one, you're going to go 4 to the left, and then 16 to the left. So let's think about the rule on this. So if you're adding two negatives, you just add them. So you add 4 plus 16, which is... 20, and you keep the sign, because both of them have the same sign. All right, so same thing on three. They're both negative, so you add them up, keep the sign. So you see why the number line would be kind of a nuisance, like on the last one, you would have to go left 123 places. That would not be fun. All right, since they're both negative, they have the same thing, I'm just going to add them up. When I add those two up, I'm going to get 328. Since they're both negative, my answer is going to be negative. All right, go to example two. Now we have one positive and one negative. They're a little bit harder. But it might be helpful if you look at the number line again. Alright, so I have positive 5, so I start at 0. My vector has a magnitude of 5 and direction right. From that, I'm going to go negative 3, so left 3. So 1, 2, 3. So my second arrow is going to be right here on 2. So my answer is 2. All right, how long is the arrow that represents 5? Five? 5. Five. What direction does it point? Right. It's positive. How long is the arrow that represents negative 3? It's 3. So it can't be negative 3 long. It has to just be 3. But what the direction tells you it's negative. What direction is it? Left. Which arrow is longer? So obviously the one that's longer is the one that's bigger, which is the one that is five. What's the sum? Where'd we end up? Two. 
If you were to represent the sun using an arrow, how long would the arrow be? It'd be too long in what direction? It'd go right because it's positive. Alright, this is the same thing, example 2, the second part, only has different numbers. So pause your video and you go ahead and work that and then come back and we'll work it together. Alright, we're starting with 4, so 0 to 4. Direction right, magnitude 4, and then I have to go 7 to the left because it's negative. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I'm going to end up right here. Alright, in the two examples above, we did one before this. What's the relationship between the length of the arrow representing the sum and the lengths of the arrows representing the two add ends? So the sum is all of it put together. So they want to know how those two things are related. So I'll give you just a minute if you haven't answered that to go ahead and answer it. So I'm not going to write the answer out, I'll just read you what it should be. The length of the arrow representing the sum is equal to the difference, so when you subtract, of the absolute values of the length of both arrows representing the two add ends. So if you really don't understand what they're saying there, it's not really critical for this stuff. It's more critical you know the rules. What's the relationship between the direction of the arrow representing the sum and the direction of the arrows representing the two add ends? All right, so what they want you to write there is the direction of the arrow representing the sum has the same direction as the arrow of the add end. That's actually the bigger one. So it has the bigger absolute value. All right, write a rule that will get the length and direction of the arrow representing the sum of the two values that have opposite signs. All right, the length of the arrow of the sum is the same thing that we just said. It's the difference of the absolute values of the two numbers. The direction is the same as the direction of the longer arrow. So it's basically that rule that you wrote in your notes, but this one's talking about the number line. That's the rule. You add rational numbers and integers. So remember, rational numbers, they're talking about fractions. With opposite signs, by subtracting, take the bigger minus the smaller, keep the sign of the bigger. All right, so on this, they only want the sign, again, like you did before. So let's look at that. So this is easy to figure out if you know the rule. So one's positive and one's negative. So what you do in your head is you, you're subtracting these two. So when you subtract that, two minus one, you're going to get one. And you decide your sign by whichever one is bigger. Well, two is bigger, and two is positive. So that means the answer is going to be positive. All right, on the second one, the bigger one, you've got five and you've got nine. Ignore the sign. Nine is bigger, so the answer is going to be the same thing as nine. Negative. On this one, you have six and three. Six is bigger and six is negative. On this one, you have 11 and one. 11 is bigger and 11 is negative. 
So that's how you determine what the sum is going to be. We're going to practice a few of these. All right, let's do these together. This time, I put on their answer with a sign because oftentimes people just want to say what the sign is, but they want the actual answer. So when you have negative 10 and 7, what you have to think in your head is these are always going to be subtraction. When you have one positive and one negative, so you think the bigger one, 10 is bigger, minus the smaller one, which is 7, so your answer is 3. We said the bigger one was 10, so the answer is the same sign as this, which is negative. So it becomes negative 3. All right, on the second one, you have 8 to 16. 16 is bigger, so I know my answer is going to be negative. All right, so I put 16 on top. Minus 8 will give me 8, so my answer is negative 8. On this one, I have 12 and 65. 65 is bigger, so I know my answer is going to be the same thing as 65, which is positive. All right, so when I work it, I put 65 on top because it's bigger, minus 12. And I said it's going to be positive. All right, on this one, well, I have 126 and 105. 126 is bigger, so I know my answer is going to be negative. So when I work it, I'm going to do 126 minus 105. So my answer is negative 21. So if this is a little confusing to you, I'm going to tell you the same thing. Go try to find a con, K-H-A-N video or a YouTube video that maybe gives you more examples. Alright, it's the same thing when you apply it to rational numbers, which is fractions. The only difference is now you have to actually do fractions, which people tend not to love. Alright, find the sum of 6 plus negative 2 and 1 fourth. Alright, you have a positive and a negative. So remember, when you have a positive and negative, you have to subtract. So ignore the signs and put the bigger one on top. The bigger one is going to be 6. And you're going to do minus 2 and 1 fourth. All right, now remember that little review we did on subtracting. This means I have 0 fourths. So I'm going to have to borrow from 6. When I borrow, I don't put a 1. I add these two. 4 plus 0 is 4. So my numerator becomes 4. So 4 minus 1 is 3, and 5 minus 2 is 3. All right, and my bigger one here was positive, so my answer is positive. So that's my answer. So those little steps that I read are telling you how to solve that, but that's how you do it. You have to follow the rules for your signs and the rules for fractions. So a little more involved. All right, so go ahead and hit pause on your video and work these problems and then come back and we'll work them together. So the first one is find the sum of negative 18 plus 7. So the first thing you have to ask yourself is, are the signs the same? If they're the same, you add them. But they're not. You have one negative and one positive, so you subtract them. So 18 minus 7 is 11. And the bigger one is negative, so the answer is negative. All right, B says if the temperature outside was 73 degrees at 5, but it fell, so when it falls, it goes down, so that's negative. 5 
fell 19 degrees by 10. What is the temperature at 10? So this problem is 73 plus negative 19. It says write an equation so that one equals sign. All right, so you have a positive and a negative. So when you have a positive and a negative, remember you have to subtract. 73 is bigger and it's positive, so my answer is going to be positive. So I'm going to do 73 minus 19 over here. So the answer is 54, and the bigger one is positive. So what is the temperature at 10 p.m.? 54 degrees. All right, C says write an addition sentence and find the sum using the diagram below. All right, here's a fraction one. So remember, you start with the one closest to the number line. So this is negative 10. We're finding the sum, so I know we're adding. Plus the second one is three and a half. All right, one's positive and one's negative. So I'm gonna have to subtract. So I'm gonna put the bigger one, which is 10, on top, minus three and a half. Remembering my fraction rules. My bigger one was negative, so my answer will be negative. So this means I have zero halves. When I borrow from 10, it becomes nine. Top number becomes two. 2 minus 1 is 1 half, and 9 minus 3 is 6. So my answer is 6 and a half. And the bigger number was negative, so my answer is actually negative 6 and 1 half. All right. So the rules of adding numbers with opposite signs. When they have opposite signs, you have to subtract and you keep the sign of the bigger number. So negative three plus negative eight, they have the same sign, so you add them, that becomes eight plus three is 11, keep the sign, so that becomes negative 11. What do you think the rules would be for subtracting numbers with the same sign? Don't worry too much about that because that's going to be the next lesson. So I hope you understand this. Again, look up videos. I know it's a lot for one lesson. And we'll start lesson five next.